Today we're going to be looking at this thermal imaging camera which Banggood have sent me to review and share with you. It's called an HTO2 and they're currently selling for $200, which is really cheap for a thermal camera. If you're not familiar with thermal cameras, entry level ones from well known brands are typically around the $1000 mark and easily go up to the $10,000 to $20,000 mark. So we'll have a look at some of the features of this camera as well as what you can and can't do with it. The camera comes in this black and yellow box which has a magnetic flap in the front. There isn't much else to the box, it doesn't give you much information on the specifications of the camera itself, but you can get all of that online on the product page. Inside the box you'll find a thermal camera which comes in a nice hard shell carry case. The case zips closed and inside we've got the manual right on top, so let's have a look at that first. Here are some of the specifications for the HTO2 thermal camera. It has an infrared image resolution of 60 by 60 which is a total of 3600 pixels. This is on the lower end for thermal cameras, but should still be good enough to get a fair amount of detail for objects which aren't too far away. It also has a regular camera with a resolution of 0.3 megapixels. It has a temperature range of minus 20 to 300 degrees, which is also pretty good. It's actually better than most other entry level thermal cameras. Its accuracy is claimed to be within 2% or 2 degrees Celsius. It's also got a range of color palettes and includes an 8 gigabyte SD card. It's powered by 4 AA batteries, which will give you a total run time of around 6 hours. The manual runs you through the components, features and buttons. It also shows you the menu functions and how to replace the batteries. We then have a section on how to take measurements and change the colour palettes. There's also a guide on how to mix images. This feature is really quite useful. It enables you to overlay the thermal image and the camera image so that you can better locate warm or cold spots on an object. You're given 5 different levels of mixing from a complete camera image to a complete thermal image. They also include a small guide on the emissivity of common materials. Different materials emit infrared energy at varying levels and this is a means to calibrate the thermal imaging camera to get more accurate results. The default is 0.95 which is a good starting point for most materials and for when you're measuring a variety of materials in one image. But this is something to keep in mind when you're taking measurements, particularly with metals. That's pretty much it for the manual, we'll go over some of the features and operation of the camera while we try it out. The camera is packaged in a sealed plastic bag and is held in place with an elastic strap on the inside of the case. The camera actually feels pretty solid, it's got a wrist strap which is tied to the bottom of the handle and it's also got a tripod mount. On the back we have the display and 6 buttons for navigating through the settings and menus. The screws are all covered on the sides by small rubberized plugs. On the front we got the thermal camera at the top and then the visual camera underneath it. There's also a red trigger button on the handle which is used to take photos. At the top of the camera is the micro SD card slot which again is covered with a rubberized flap and you're given an 8GB micro SD card which should be plenty of space for the resolution that the camera runs at. I've mentioned before that it feels quite solid and pretty well built. The yellow material on the outside has a rubbery feel to it, so it feels like something you can use around a workshop. We'll need to put 4 AA batteries into the handle to power it. The battery compartment cover just slides into place. We then need to push and hold the menu button to turn it on, and it goes straight into the thermal camera mode. Let's have a look at the menu and some of the settings. There's an option to switch between Celsius and Fahrenheit. I'm not really sure what this BG setting's for, the manual just describes it as a default setting. It might be some sort of calibration offset. 
We've then got the storage space on the card, color palette options, emissivity settings, single or multi-point measurement, ambient temperature, the time, the number of pictures taken, and the display brightness. On the measurement screen you've got the thermal image in the center, with the center point temperature on the top left, and then a battery indicator along with the emissivity on the right. At the bottom you've got the color palette setting, the current time, and then the minimum and maximum temperature in the current image. The LED on the front is turned on by pressing and holding the trigger button, and is turned off in the same way. Let's start out by looking at a Raspberry Pi through the thermal camera. This Pi hasn't been turned on, so it should be the same temperature as the rest of the room. So you can't see anything on the thermal camera. If we switch to the visual camera, you can see that the Pi is in the shot, it's just not emitting any heat yet. Let's try plugging in the Pi and see it heat up a bit. You can now see we're getting a warm spot on the bottom of the ice tower. We can also mix the visual and thermal camera images together to better see where the heat is coming from. There are five blending options for thermal and visual camera images. This is useful to locate specific areas in your picture which are generating heat. Next let's try looking at my hand placed on the desk. You can see my hand's thermal signature stays around after I've removed my hand from the desk. Even with the fairly low resolution of the thermal sensor, you still get pretty good definition and you can make out objects fairly well, as long as they're not really small. Lastly, let's have a look at these two cups of water. The one is cold and the other is hot which you can't really tell from the camera unless you notice the steam above one cup. Here's what they look like under the thermal camera. Let's also have a look at the five color palette options using the hot and cold mugs. You can also use this camera around your house or workshop to find gaps between windows and doors, find faulty equipment or leaks, and to see if equipment has been left running. There are three main things I would have liked to have had on this camera, which would have all been relatively easy to add. The first is that I would like to have had a video option. It would be useful to see how objects heat up or cool down, like my 3D printer. And with the tripod mount already there, this would be a good addition for monitoring an object for a couple of minutes. You could also add a simple alarm which triggers if the temperature exceeds a certain high or low limit. The next would be to be able to digitally adjust the alignment of the two overlaid images. It's not always possible to get your object exactly 0.5 meters away from it, and then you're left with a slightly mismatched image. This doesn't make the feature unusable, as you can still generally see where the overlay is supposed to be, but this would have been pretty simple to do and would give you much better quality images. Here's an example of an image that I've fixed up compared to the original image. Lastly, it would have been nice to have a rechargeable battery, People just don't use AA batteries as often as they used to, and it's a bit of a mission to have to get to the store to get some more if they die. Obviously an internal battery and charger would push up the price a bit, but I think the 10 or $20 more would be worth it for the convenience. If you do use rechargeable batteries in this camera, then it shows up as a low battery warning and shuts down prematurely, because rechargeable AA batteries are generally only 1.2 volts each. Overall, I still think this is a great value for money camera, and I definitely recommend getting one to try out if you're unsure about spending thousands of dollars on a thermal camera. It has a few drawbacks, but none of them are serious. It's still a perfectly functional camera, and is great for getting started with thermal imaging. I'll put a link to it in the video description. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials, and reviews.